All right, so one of the first things I did was the fatigue restoration. And as you can see, it still looks pretty good. It's held up really well. Uh, the boat is a little bit dirty, and uh, I don't like it when it gets dirty, so I'm gonna get it cleaned up. And... February full moon regatta, full effect. It's the docks back that direction. Three boats over there. You ain't first, you're last. Hi everyone, this is Danny and welcome to Sailing Beautiful. This new channel is dedicated to sharing my story of buying an old sailboat, fixing her up, and chasing a dream. I will be adding new content regularly that covers our adventures along the way. I invite you to subscribe, like the videos, and join me in this adventure. Everybody, this is Danny from Sailing Beautiful, and I'm here at the boat this morning. Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday morning, February 21st, 2021, and um, it's a little bit choppy out here. The winds are out of the northeast at about 15 to 20 miles per hour, and unfortunately, this marina that we're in, at Black Creek Marina, beautiful marina, great. I have nothing to complain about, but unfortunately, when the winds come out of the northeast, there's not a lot of protection, so. Of course, it gets a little choppy when the winds pick up out of the northeast. So that's what we're dealing with this morning. And anyway, I'm going to be here this morning to kind of just go over some of the larger items that I went over during the refit. Um, that was last year, summer of last year. So just want to show you how some of the things are holding up. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so one of the first things I did was the fatigue restoration. And as you can see, it's, it still looks pretty good. It's held up really well, um, I think. Um, I've had to apply a couple more coats of teak oil since I first restore everything. But um, it actually needs another coat right now. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some spots there towards the top. Yeah. So, get to that. But uh, yeah, the teak still looks pretty, pretty good, solid. Uh, funny story about the combing board on this side, on my uh, starboard side. Um, see the cleat right there. It has a nice, looks like a crack underneath. And originally, I repaired that with some wood glue, and that didn't do too well. And uh, I've had a couple of people actually put their hand on that and it cracked again. The crack just opened right back up again. So um, since then, I've actually repaired it with epoxy. I uh, used a thick of epoxy, and you can push on that thing, grab it, and try to move it around, probably stand on it, and it's not gonna break. It's, it's really held up really well since I fixed it with the epoxy. Um, another spot, I'm trying to get out of the, the stairs. Anyway, stairs. Away. But another spot is right here, and uh, that originally wasn't it wasn't cracked. Well, it was a small crack there, but um, when I've had the boat on the other side of the marina, as you can see, I have my boat on the other side of the marina over there. That's the northeast. So it winds out of the northeast uh, on that side of the marina on that side of this dock. It's very exposed. So. This boat was getting knocked all over the place, which I can probably see that video as well. It's pretty, pretty scary, but she survived. Uh, but anyway, in the middle of all that, I had my spring lines. So you can see I have my spring lines now going around this stanchion. Uh, but prior to that, I actually had them up against the teak wood right here. And during that storm, that northeast, that northeast blow that we had, um, it put a lot of tension on the spring lines and cracked the teak wood right here. So I had to, uh, and it, it was pretty, it was pretty bad actually. Uh, it's cracked, not just in one crack, but there was actually some splintering cracks too. So I had to 
put that all back together and then um, I fixed it with epoxy resin again, thickened epoxy. And um, I had to use some some paint to color it in, sort of like wood, but it didn't turn out the best, but it works. It's solid, it's not really anywhere. But yeah, um, other issue I've got with the teak is, you know, some of the stuff rubs against it, causing it to wear down. Uh, so I'm just gonna have to go back over with teak oil again. So there is some maintenance involved, but still, um, it's beautiful wood, beautiful teak wood, so I'm glad I was able to restore it. Okay, for the electrical, here's the uh, electrical switch box, uh, switch panel box I built. And um, it's just also held up really well. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't get wet underneath here or anything. Um, so haven't had any issues with moisture or anything like that. But um, as you can see, my voltmeter is showing that my charger is actually, in a, is actually charging the battery right now. So it's in a charging cycle. Um, but that's actually very handy to have that voltmeter. The boat was supposed to come with a voltmeter originally, but when I got the boat, empty hole here instead of the battery um, voltmeter. So I was not able to find a replacement. Well, I thought I was looking for a replacement, and then I, when I got this switch panel, I saw that it already had a voltmeter, so I figured there was no need to have two. Uh, unless I had two batteries and wanted to check each one individually, but probably could have the battery switch anyway. Well, anyway, uh, so this is the switch panel, and I'm gonna open it up by just popping it open. And as you can see, everything still looks pretty good. Um, I haven't had to do any maintenance on this since I put it together. Just did. Um, but yeah, that's held together well. I have all the lines going down. I had to drill some holes in the bottom of the box to fish the lines through. Come out underneath here. Go to the battery and then go back beyond that bulkhead through that, that hole down and then back underneath this hole liner and goes under the into the bilge. I've got my bilge pump system. Okay, uh, so what was originally on the boat was this switch panel, which is very basic, obviously. Um, and so I tied that to the wires that went through between the liner and the fiberglass went down underneath here and then came back out below. Uh, just above the battery. Yeah, you can see it right there. Um, I tied those back into the fuse panel box here, here, and here. And so now they're on their own fuse circuit. And the VHF radio and depth sounder are on their own fuse circuit. Um, eventually I'm going to be adding more um, as I add more electronics and bells and whistles to the boat, but for now this works. You might notice that the seacocks are looking pretty bad. That's on my list of items to do on the next haul out. Uh, I'm going to have to service these seacocks because they're original. I don't think they've ever been serviced since 1982. If they have, I don't, I don't know about it, but they're holding up well. Um, they both knew, they both, you know, they did their job, but they look like they need to be serviced. Okay, the interior paint is still looking great. I have no complaints about this paint whatsoever. Um, it was a little difficult to apply. It's thicker than normal paint, but it really did well. Um, let me see. This is where I cut around the teak with the tapered painter's brush. And uh, did okay. Wanted to use painter's tape originally, but I uh, didn't want to deal with the sticking too much. I had an issue with that outside. But um, everything looks pretty good. This is the 
that's where I fix the hatch. My dose pump system. As you can see, it's on this flat metal bar. I can actually pull this out. So then this whole piece will come out and take the dose pump with it. If I ever, if I ever have a little, little critter in there. Anyway, uh, if I ever have to take this pump out, I can do so pretty easily just by pulling up on that metal bar. So check this out. I got everything wired up. Well, everything I got wired up outside of the boat for now. Testing out my uh, my bilge pump assembly. I got here that little that metal bracket goes down to the access hole uh, so I can reach the bilge pump. And I got a separate float alarm switch. It's a backup. There's actually a, a float, um, a float switch in the bilge itself uh, but I wanted to back up also sets off an alarm here's the front and uh, there's the bilge switch with the alarm so I can set it on manual turns the alarm turns the switch uh, the bilge on manually or I can set it on automatic and that will Come on when the build switch, the float switch is engaged, which is right here. And the cool thing about this is this backup, in case the water level gets too high, this will be above the other one like this. If the water level gets too high and this switch will engage the, the, the pump as well and sound off an alarm. Pretty sweet. And the other cool thing is, is if you have the switch off, this backup float alarm still engages the bilge pump. All right, another project that I did was the VHF radio. And um, as you can see, this is where it's installed. I got it wired into the switch panel box. And then the antenna wire runs behind, from behind the VHF radio back that way to around that bulkhead. And then it runs back across the road back across this bulkhead, back here, and then it runs through this locker box, right here, and then to the antenna, which I have mounted to the uh, push bit back, the push bit. And it's a good signal right there. Finally, the other project that I did to refit was in this depth transducer. And right now it's telling us it's we're in seven, you know, seven and a half. We're bouncing around a lot, so we're going to get some variations on reading. But it works really well. And uh, there was no hole here originally, uh, so I had to drill that out with a hole saw. And, uh, and then we just kind of wired it down again into the switch panel box. And the actual transducer that reads the depth is an in-hole transducer, which I was extremely happy to use um, because I didn't want to drill another, another hole in the bottom of the boat for a new through hole for that. Uh, Harry had to do that for the bilge pump. So I um, didn't want to do that for this. And uh, this in-hole transducer works really well, believe it or not. And I'll show you how I put it together. So um, 
they typically tell you that, that you should, if you're going to have an in-hole transducer, that you should put it in some sort of liquid that's contained in a, like a PVC pipe or whatever, and then that has to be, that PVC pipe has to be epoxy to the, to the hull. And um, it seemed like quite a bit of work. You had to get the right angle on the pipe, and then you have to epoxy it in. And then if you get the placing wrong, you might have to do it all over again. It seemed like a lot of trouble. So I decided I would just try this kind of dirty method first. And I had read that you could actually put the transducer in, um, you could put the transducer in wax, like toilet ring wax. Just use a toilet ring wax you could get from a regular um, home improvement store. And then just turn it into a ball of wax, stick it in that wax and shove it on top of the, the bottom of the hole where it's as flat as you can find. And it works great. So anyway, let me show you. Uh, I'll show you where it is. So you just follow this black line all the way back. This wire just goes down in here. It's set there in a little ball of wax. And that works great. I never have any issues with it. If I, wanna, if I need to move it for any reason or service it or replace it, I just pull it out of that wax, clean it up, put a new one in, or reinstall it. So, and here's the, uh, this is the pipe for the bilge pump. It goes up and over this bulkhead, which allows for enough rise for uh, backwater to not flow backwards back into the system. Hey everybody, back at the boat today, and today we're going to be doing some cleanup. Uh, the boat is a little bit dirty, and uh, I don't like it when it gets dirty, so I want to get it cleaned up and looking nice again. So. I'll be filming it and uh, hope you enjoy. That's it. She's all clean. Not too shabby. She looks pretty clean. You'd be surprised. It actually didn't look bad when I started cleaning, but when you actually start scrubbing, you realize all the dirt that's off. She's looking nice and clean now. After all of that work, it was time to get out on the water and have some fun. Black Creek Yacht Club's Full Moon Regatta was the perfect remedy to get out on the water and enjoy the evening. Black Creek Yacht Club is a small organization of local sailors who meet each month on or around the full moon at the Black Creek Marina to have a sailing regatta, which usually covers about six miles in the St. Johns River in Northeast Florida. We start at the mouth of the Black Creek Tributary and race northeast across the river around a channel marker then to another channel marker due south, before racing back to the start line at Black Creek. This regatta presented with great weather and light winds. The light winds were just enough to provide some exciting times in the water. For this race, an old friend of mine, John Crawford, joined me as crew and handled most of the steering while I maintained the sails. Although Beautiful didn't win the race, a great time was had by all. February full moon regatta, full effect. John Crawford, he's doing the uh, tiller. 
and we're in last place, but that's all right. Because it's not all about wheeling. It's about the fun and the drinking. It's the docks back that direction. Three boats over there. We're still heading towards the marker. Behind us. Not last place, but first. It's all right. If you ain't first, you're last. Close to the finish line. <laughs> and there's the full moon. Full moon regatta. <laughs> 